five ship. Uh, OJ OB. Change dimensional, baby. It's time to move on up, yo. Ha ha. My three to five ship from Sonic to mine. Make the quick of time flint to the flip. Lip decision to life. Get deep in tune with the tune. Color swooping the move. Body sway, stir the paint, swirl the stained glass view. Shape them up, words them like structure the sound. Like space, ghost ship, rip, sip, pass that around. I be the crease in the breeze. Current in the seas, make them move with ease. From calm or storm, I will see. Crucial strokes of tone, rhythm like you never known and you never know. Zoning for the better stroke, trans dimensional, trans the whole damn flow, trans the whole dang low, tell he go that road, orchestrate them in the placement, stargate, arrangement, trace it, fold those spaces, your oil don't mean shit, fuel is the will, hold it still in the perfective and easy location. Come in, trans dimensional, yeah, from material to mind, my three to five shit, baby. Hey, yeah, yeah. I resonate into consciousness, acknowledge the best. That's what I use, those my tools, it's a non-contest. Creativity is the speed that the purpose call When it come to work and I've been serving them all Like the center saw, y'all Bouncing off walls, cut the anchor bar yeah. Tighten them cords into the source code We up resourceful, feel what the source hold Hold that, yeah, then hear what the source told Seemingly foretold, be the eternal throwback Curveball from the turbo, laser through ice like a chainsaw digital, ripping through time to introduce to the future plumes that ate your fuel up, moved you up, two jump, four five, zoom up. From the three, not just surviving no more, nah, four for the life, five with your no worth. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Devil on earlier today. Let's see. All right, welcome to another fine episode of Easy Stars Variety Society. And today, uh, as you've already seen, I think I think when I edit, I'm gonna put the new video that I made. Um, I actually made a song called Three to Five Shift. Uh, I think I've discussed it before on the show. Uh, cosmically speaking, coming down to Earth, we are being given the type of or you know the type of energy is being shed upon us to where it'll be more uh, facilitating for us to go from the third dimension, which is length, width, and height, physical stuff, to um, the fifth dimension, to where our mind will put us where we are. Like uh, it's more based on the pureness of the um, thought energy. Pure thought, pure mind. You know, we're gonna get closer to that, and uh, it's gonna be quite, you know, more important uh, for us to think good thoughts and things of that nature, and, and our plans and goals and things need to be planned well, so we can end up in good places because that energy is pushing high, and that's the more natural way in the hue. So, um, cosmically speaking, you know, universally speaking, so. <clears throat> Three to five shift made a video guest starring your boy uh <laughs> guest starring your boy uh Marvelous Marvolo. You know what I'm saying? Just put some character into the video. Nice video. So anyways, you got that. And then also I got uh, some other snippets, some uh, music. I'm trying to get more of you know my artistic or just artistic period, don't have to be me. You know, artistic uh content onto the show. Also, um, today, and what I'm about to do right now, is talk about time. Like the third shift, the, the third dimension would be physical. We're going to, uh, fourth dimension energy is coming in through, too. And some people call that the time dimension. I, I say it's the light dimension, you know what I mean? Those who say it's the time dimension say it's the time light dimension. You know, usually they throw, you know, they, they try to, they sneak that time in there. But really, today I'm coming to you to present the concept of time as an illusion. All right. 
You hear it all. You hear it once in a while. You hear some people say time is just an illusion. Then you hear some people say, you know, time is real. And I really wouldn't argue with either one of those. What I would say is when I say time is an illusion, it's in comparison to truth and not to just reality. You know what I'm saying? Because all reality is, is the total, uh, I don't know what the word for that, but you add everything everybody thinks and does up and put it into one big pot, that's reality. Now everybody don't have to think true and do behave truly. So that's where you begin to see the separation between reality and truth. You know what I'm saying? So what when I say time is an illusion, I'm you I'm stating that in, in, in comparison to truth, not reality. All right. So time, when you really think about it, is I'm gonna look at this time versus form, the form of things and the way things are actually moving. And you know, uh, what do they say? Uh, actions speak louder than words. Action are truer than words and things like that. So the form of actions versus time. And really time, when you think about the most basic concept of it, you get the sundial. Time is just an effect, just like the shadow that you're using to tell, tell the time. And just like shadow is the after effect of light shining on a physical thing. Um, time is really us trying to measure a couple of a number of things. One would be the Earth's revolution to uh, tell how many minutes or, you know, the Earth's revolution tells you a day. And we divide it up into 24, and then we divide each of those 24s up into 60 minutes, and then those 60 minutes up into 60 seconds. Those are only estimations of the actual form of the Earth revolving on its axis. And, like, take for instance, when the um, earthquake hit Japan and was registered as a 9 point whatever earthquake, um... The Earth's axis actually shift, shifted. So those who, those who conduct themselves under the concept of, you know, it's not time, it's the form of things, and they realize the Earth's axis shift, they'll be more readily a, a be a, adjusted to what's true. As opposed to somebody who's keeping time and they're looking at their watch and the 60 seconds, that 60 seconds or whatever, that time on the clock will not account for the Earth's axis of the shift. We will actually have to catch up and maybe adjust the time later because time is man-made, which is another proof that it is um, an illusion. You know what I'm saying? Another form that we use is the year. The year is... How long it take the earth to rotate the sun? The proof is right there smacking our face. We have a leap year because we can't accurately, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, we can't accurately give it the right amount of time to, to match the form, like to match the form. Really it's just the form, it's a guesstimation, an estimation of the form of the earth rotating around the sun. So, you know, if that changes, then our time is off. Because the time is an illusion. You see what I'm saying. Now, break it down a little further. I always like, speaking of truth, if we're going to measure it up against truth, we're going to measure it up against um, the, what is the, the, the laws of nature. The hermetic laws of nature. The hermetic laws of nature is basically, they named it hermetic, but uh, they got it from Egypt. You know, uh, that's about as far back that goes far back in our history, you know what I'm saying? It may go back a, further, a little further. You go into the Middle East, the uh, Tigris, Euphrates, or whatever, uh, a little bit more, you know. But the Egyptian civilization was pretty much the earliest civilization that we acknowledge today as solid, you know what I mean? So then it went to Greek, to Rome, to England, and then the U.S. and England now. So through Egypt, through Greece, through Rome, through England and the U.S., these hermetic laws have stood the test of time. We might not actually be able to say everything that's true with accuracy, 
But we can say that truth does hold these characteristics and, and they have been proven through these hermetic laws, uh, you know, all the time. I'm going to show a picture of the hermetic laws, a list of them right now. All right, everybody. Mic check one, two. All right, so we're going to talk about the hermetic laws of nature. The laws of nature, they're commonly referred to. Everybody get your cameras ready. You know what I'm saying? Get your micro recorders. You know what I'm saying? Get your DVD recorders, whatever you use to record. The notebook, pen, paper, get that ready. Because I'm telling you, the laws of nature is something you can universally use to measure up the consistency and truth of, you know, tons of subjects and angles. You know what I mean? Some consistency that has uh, proven throughout time. I already talked about that. So, the first great principle, the first great law is mentalism. Um, and basically that is just stating the all is mind the universe is mental and uh, they all this, this website I went to also listed uh, the chakras and glands that are correspond with each law which is something I've you know it's the first time for me to come across so uh, through correspondence uh, the crown chakra and the pituitary gland are linked with mentalism the pituitary gland is the first gland to appear in the human embryo. Very interesting. Alright, so then we go to the second law, which is correspondence. Simply put, is as above, so below. As below, so above. Through correspondence again, um, it relates to the brow chakra, which is also called the third eye. And uh, it's related to the pineal gland. The pineal gland produces melatonin that controls the waking and sleeping cycles. All right. Then we go to the third law, which is vibration. Simply put, nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. By correspondence, is connected to the throat chakra uh, and the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland produces thyroxin to convert oxygen and food into usable energy. So then we go to the fourth law, which is polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites, like and unlike, are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. All right, and it's represented by the heart chakra, and that's connected to the thymus gland. Uh, I wonder why this, it's not connected to the heart gland. Well, maybe it's not a gland. But anyways, the thymus gland produces T cells for the immune system of the body. All right. Then we go to the fifth, which is rhythm. In parenthesis is the cycles. Uh, sim simply put, everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything the measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left rhythm compensates the correspondence is connected to the navel chakra and the uh, adrenal gland <clears throat> the adrenal gland produces hydrocortisone that regulates the use of food and helps the body adjust to stress all right that's that uh, that's that all right then six is cause and effect every cause has its effect every effect has its cause everything happens according to law chance is but a name for law not recognized there are many planes of causation but nothing escapes the law uh connected to the spleen chakra and uh the leiden or spleen the spleen produces uh, macrophages to cleanse the blood and is vital to the immune system of the body and a person's health. Then finally is the uh, seventh is gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principle. Gender manifests on all planes, gives and takes. Uh, the root chakra and uh, the sacral or reproductive gland of the male and female in all species reproductive organs of male and female and all life forms that exist.
And that concludes the little brief synopsis of the Hermetic or Seven Laws of Nature. Peace. We're going to go through them now. We're going to go through each one and, and discuss time within each of the seven laws. Right? So the first law, mentality. How does time affect mentality? Mentality transcends even the truth of nature. Sometimes. Like, like, mentality is based on our decisions and our choices and um, our willingness to learn so that we can uh, increase the accuracy of our perceptions, the way we see things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't have anything to do with time. It all has everything to do with perception and has everything to do with decision and your motivations and things of that nature. Your characteristics as a soul don't have nothing to do with time. So I, I figure we could go on to the next one, which would be correspondence. Correspondence is the law that states it is above in the heavens as it is below on the earth. Also, you could take that to mean everything is related. You take the word co-respond. You know what I mean? So it's like when you respond to something, it's tied in like domino effect to every, everything else that's going on. Like you are not separated to yourself, to, to your own island, basically is what that means. You know what I mean? You could, we are all connected as one. You know, so we do have individuality, but correspondence is, is, is part of the truth as well. You know, um, especially when you think in terms of the source, going back to the whole, the one, you know what I'm saying? More purer aspects of the universe. Um, don't have anything to do with time. The form of what is above is what the form of it is below. You know what I'm saying? The form of what someone does in the community affects the form of what someone else is, you, you, you know, it affects the form of the options that someone else in the community may have. You know what I'm saying? And don't want to get too deep into that because we, you know, we could break that down in 50 different fit fractures. So. The next law would be vibration, and that don't have nothing to do with but just like the movement and the life of things. The quality of vibration, vibrate high, vibrate low, vibrate uh, wide, vibrate short, you know what I'm saying, tall, you know, short, I should say wide and slim, tall and short vibration waves. Um, it's just a measurement of energy, you know what I'm saying, energy don't have nothing to do with time, energy going to be energetic no matter what's on the clock. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what's on the clock in that aspect of time that we accept in reality. But in truth, energy don't have nothing to do with the time. Vibration. So then the next would be polarity. Polarity is basically the idea that for every idea, every mentality, you know, every thought, there's poles. There's opposite poles. Just like the Earth has the North Pole and the South Pole. Every idea has a, a, a pole, you know what I'm saying? It has opposite ends. Every line within, like you can take an idea and, and draw a, a particular line of logic through it, that line of logic will have a pole on one and a pole on the other end. Like uh, two sides to every story, two sides to a coin. That's all that's really saying with the polarity, you know what I'm saying? So then we go to rhythm. Now rhythm would be, to me, where time actually may you can start to talk about it you know what i'm saying you can start to talk about it because you, you can include the days you can include the seasons you can include the years you can include like the six the two thousand year ages uh the six thousand year cycles of the suns and the moons and cycles is basically the word that that we're dealing with here and you can actually start to maybe gauge okay I've been here 10 days you know what I'm saying because the rhythm went flipped 10 times you know what I'm saying but that's still different than the clock the hour the minutes that's trying to paint a, it's just an estimation of the rhythm basically so 
you can slide it in there, but the time will fit in there as an effect again of the form of rhythm. It's an effect. I mean, and, and, and while we're on that topic, before we go to uh, you know to the next, which would be cause and effect, um, like in uh, Eastern philosophies, there uh, when you think of cause and effect, the only thing that's real is the cause. Everything that is an effect is an illusion, really. So if we want to talk in those terms, it's already off the muscle proven that time is an illusion. You know what I mean? So. Just think about that. I'm just putting that out there to support my, you know, discussion today. So, um, the next hermetic law of nature uh, is cause and effect. And basically, for every cause, there's an effect. Um, has nothing to do with time. No matter at what point in the form of things, when... A certain chemistry a certain dynamic or when a certain decision is made and put into action by a source there will be an effect there will be if you chose a there will be an a effect if you chose b there will be a b effect if the chemistry a happened then whatever happens after chemistry a that's what's going to happen if you do a different kind of chemistry chemistry b Call, that's the cause the, the chemistry B effect is going to happen. So for every cause, their effect, it don't got nothing to do with time. You know what I mean? So then we go to gender is the last one. And gender is basically the law of gives and takes. You know, we call ourselves gender male and female. Uh, women receive the, the sex energy and men give the sex energy. Uh, basically, that's all it is, is gives and takes. Magnetics, you got... Um, that which receives the magnetism, that which gives off the magnetism. Uh, kind of related to polarity in a way, but it, I mean, they give it its own thing, so we're going to consider it like that. You know what I mean? Um, time doesn't fit into any one of those except for maybe rhythm. And time is only a man-made device to try to... Like to stay on with the form, to be accurate with the form, but it's not accurate with the form. That's why we have leap years. That's why we can actually do things like daylight saving time. You know what I'm saying? Because we know the rhythm. So the rhythm is the truth of that. The time is the reality. And, and truth and reality are different things. So what basically, as I, when I first thought of this concept, I decided to put it in practice, sort of experiment to say, and the thing that I noticed was that if you're looking for your opportunities, this is one thing, opportunities. If you're looking for your opportunities to happen on the clock, you're going to miss a lot of opportunities. Opportunities present themselves again as form. That window of opportunity opens. And that window of opportunity closes. Whatever the mechanisms behind that window opening and closing, we, I don't want to get too deep, but we know about windows of opportunity. That form, so you pay attention to that window. You don't pay attention to the clock, because if you're paying attention to the clock, you're not looking at the window, and you may miss your opportunity. All right, so let's go back and just talk about the fact that time is man-made. That would mean that it is manipulatable. And if you find yourself serving time more than the form, when you think about serving time, you actually like jail. That's jail, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're serving time. So if you serve time, you actually take yourself out of like the form of things. You put yourself and subject yourself to something that's man-made. You know what I'm saying? It can be used to your advantages at times. You know what I'm saying? But it's good to know the priority of how you're using that time. You know what I'm saying? If you're using that time before you're using rhythm, before you're using the form of the sun, you know, the earth going around the sun, you depend on the clock more than the actual form of things, you're going to miss out on, again, a lot of opportunities. When you talk about creating and getting to the fifth dimension, that's that more creative dimension. Everything that depends on the form of the mind. That, that, that pure thought is like the purest form of universal form. So if you stuck, 
of serving time, serving an illusion, serving something that's estimating pure form, then you're always going to be in a reactionary position. You're always going to be basically a slave to time, a slave to an illusion, and a slave to something man-made. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm presenting time to you as an illusion today. Put that stuff in perspective. You know what I'm saying? And make sure you're not serving time. Make sure you're serving the truth. Holla at your boy. Next time. Ha ha! <laughs> so, I'm going to be quiet. This is for the elements, water and earth. This is for the texture, the snow and the dirt. And this is for the seasons, including the winter. And this is for the one we call Mother Nature. This is for the hidden off sides of reality. This is for the matter that's formed by energy. This is for the future, present, and past. This is for the full name, first, middle, last. This is for the good life, for sure, most death. And this is for the day and night, and your next breath. This is for the music, the rhythm, the vibes. This is for a new age, a change in times. This is for the sunshine is beauty and pleasure this is for the clover just for good measure and this is for all y'all that can't stand still and this is for all y'all that live in the veil check it out bobby fucking white true believers underground and herb This is for the passion, dreams, and love. This is for the times when push came to shove. This is for the struggle of working two jobs. This is for the ignored and the acknowledged. This is for the addictions and perversions of life. And this is for the past we want left behind. This is for the looped infinity symbol. And this is for the halves that make up the whole. This is for the war that makes up the peace. And this is for the fear of facing the beast. And this is for the blood of family and friends. This is for the real or in the pretends this is for the all him her they this is for the predators and the prey this is for the unknown ways not experienced this is for the life word up true believers Yeah. Oh, that's it? Yeah, it's a short one.